Spyro the Dragon on the PlayStation wasn't the first game developed by Insomniac Games, but it created another PlayStation mascot and a healthy relationship with Sony, the same way Naughty Dog did with Crash Bandicoot. It spawned a trilogy of sequels, and Sony were ready to publish their next IP on the PlayStation 2. That game was I-5, or Girl with a Stick. It was an action-adventure RPG reminiscent of The Legend of Zelda and Tomb Raider. But after half a year, the development team weren't very happy with the project and scrapped everything after they believed it would be too boring for younger gamers. With little time left to develop a new game for the PlayStation 2, they thought of a lizard-like creature, but later designs made Ratchet look more like a cat, which probably explains why Clank has eyes like that. With the setting of outer space and planets with their own theme, the Insomniac team were a lot more creative and Ratchet and Clank was released worldwide on November 2002. After playing the 2016 remake on the PlayStation 4, I was highly interested in checking out the PlayStation 2 trilogy, so I got the Ratchet and Clank collection on the PlayStation 3, which is exactly the same, only the resolution is higher. Ratchet was just minding his own business, working on his spaceship, then another crash lands nearby, Fighting through multiple enemies trying to reach the ship, Ratchet manages to retrieve the XJ-0461 from the wreckage. I'll just call you Clank for short. Okay. Clank is a robot who became self-aware after construction and managed to escape the clutches of the block, ran by Chairman Drek. Their planet is completely ruined by industrialization, and Drek has created a plan to harvest other planets currently underway. Unfortunately, this change in mass will cause your planet to spin out of control and drift into the sun where it will explode into a flaming ball of gas, but of course, sacrifices must be made. <laughs> Clank needs to get to Captain Dipshit, I mean Captain Quark, ASAP, and Ratchet is able to do that. Meanwhile, saving other planets from the blog and undertaking hoverboard events. The chemistry between Ratchet and Clank make them extremely likeable. You have a Lombax with more attitude than Sonic the Hedgehog, and a robot 100% informative. Okay, it has a bit more personality than I give it credit for, and they work together seamlessly. Interesting. Yay! You're quite handy with your wrench. You bet. I built that ship with it. However, during the second half of the story, they tend to hate each other. I won't explain why. Although you get a couple of funny quotes here and there, it will make you cringe over time. That's what I said! No, that is what I said. Fine! Fine. Fine. This is your typical supervillain satire. There's no question that Drek wants you to hate him. This is about one thing and one thing only. Cash! And lots of it. Because Ratchet and Clank are exploring so many diverse planets, there's always a different environment and you never know what to expect, even on a spaceship. As is with most 3D platformers, it doesn't need to push the limits on a console. All you need is the correct art direction, personality, and it creates a highly imaginative universe, despite being under attack. And that's what I've been telling you. Yep, that must be former level designer Dan Johnson, God rest his soul. After Girl with a Stick was changed to Ratchet and Clank, Naughty Dog offered Insomnia Games some of the technology they used for Jack and Daxter, the precursor legacy. Although Insomnia Games CEO takes this differently, people assume that we were using Naughty Dog's engine for Ratchet, and that was not true. We shared some technology with Naughty Dog way back then, and that was great. But we are a company that puts stock in developing specialized technology, and we will continue to do so. I'm pretty sure Ratchet and Clank fans would be perfectly content if they did use Naughty Dog's engine anyway. Their games are mostly masterpieces. This technically makes Ratchet and Clank on the PlayStation 2 the closest thing to a Naughty Dog Insomniac Games collaboration. <sighs> One can dream though. But as you can tell being in 720p and in 60 frames per second, what we're looking at is the PlayStation 3 remaster in which you can get the entire trilogy in one collection. That means future Ratchet and Clank reviews are inevitable. Even with the latest updates, occasionally there are a few glitches that even a kid would find obvious. Like when you're using a suck cannon or swimming in the water, the bar on the right doesn't completely disappear, and it can only be fixed when moving to another planet. Also, there was one moment when Ratchet got his breath back, the rest of the world didn't. It looks more blue than it should, but do these niggles affect the gameplay? Well, apart from being a little distracting, absolutely not. 
But before we get to how good it is, there are a few problems that need to be addressed. I got my own problems. If you cannot see the importance of this situation, you do have problems. Firstly, lack of checkpoints. You have infinite lives, which are a relief, but the harder planets would take around 5 minutes to reach a checkpoint and there's no clear indication if you have or not. Now this would be okay if the enemies didn't respawn because the crates in your ammo supply don't. That's not the case. That means if most of your weapons run out of ammo, the challenge only increases each time you restart. Another problem is the trespasser system. This is frustratingly boring and ruins the flow. I was able to solve all except one, thank god the internet came to the rescue, but this should never have been in the game. The puzzles you have to solve with Clank are good enough. Perhaps the extra oxygen will help your brain to function properly. And finally, the hoverboard races. It controls fine for the most part, the problem is the difficulty. It took me over a dozen times to eventually win the first time. My advice is to not miss a single boost to stand a chance. So is Ratchet and Clank starting to show its age after years of wear and tear, like the first Crash Bandicoot? Are you kidding me? I love this game. I just want to get the bad stuff out of the way and end it on a high note. What are you smiling at? This is the Ratchet I always knew was there. Ratchet begins simply with an Army Wrench 8000 that you can use to beat up enemies, open doors, move obstructions, and the bomb glove used to blow up enemies close range. There's always a store nearby to purchase new weapons and ammo that would make the blog think twice when approaching Ratchet and Clank. Actually, they don't, and they pay the price for it. Why is the store's owner's screen stretched like that? That's a real beauty. Clank was originally meant to be an interchangeable robot that can turn into all of these weapons, but the idea was cancelled after animations and gameplay were too complicated. I don't know why they didn't consider trying it again in the remake. We have no time for trivial matters, sir. Ah oh, well, it gets its moments of domination. If only the store sold first aid kits, because health doesn't regenerate until you explore a new planet. Another reason why the lack of checkpoints can be frustrating at times. My best bet is to increase your maximum health on the planet Orkson, even if it costs 40,000 total bolts to reach the limit. Worth every bolt. All the planets you explore have their own objectives, and some can only be completed when visiting another planet and collecting specific gadgets and weapons that can't be found in a store. And because a few of these gadgets can even transform Clank into a jet or a hydro pack, that means it doesn't come across as a forced sidekick where protecting it is a chore. You are friendly, aren't you? To you, yes. To him, no. Well, according to me anyway. The first time I played this, my first impression was that the camera was inverted, and that's annoying, but after an hour or two, it became second nature. In fact, the controls make it incredibly fun to play through. It's not perfect, you have to stop every time you aim like GoldenEye 007, and switching weapons leave you vulnerable to attacks. But as I mentioned before, Ratchet has a lot of weapons at his disposal. He can melee attack with his army wrench, throw it, fire weapons, it's all about shooting, melee attacking, platforming, and everything comes together like a charm. Brilliant controls, the mark of a great platformer. To be honest, it should be a standard in any video game, despite the AI not being as stupid as you might think. It's your fault, not the games if you screw up, for the most part. These snippers and homing bombs are the worst. And it's not like you don't get your money's worth in gameplay time. It took just over 10 hours to beat, which is pretty good for a 3D platformer on the PlayStation 2. Did I mention replay value? Although completing every single objective is mandatory for defeating the villainous Chairman Drek, you get 35 PlayStation trophies for the PS3 version and collectibles like these golden bolts to strengthen weapons and skill points which are used for unlocking bonuses and cheats. Beating the game gives you access to challenge mode which lets you replay the whole game, but you have all the weapons, bolts and health boosts from your first save, as well as being able to purchase gold weapons. Like I said, double digit hour gameplay time is plenty, and if you've got the PS3 collection like I've got, then you're only a third of the way. And that is the Ultra Nanotech. Actually, that didn't make any sense, it just sounded cool. On top of all that, it's not that expensive to buy. Whether it be on the PlayStation 2 or the Trilogy on the PlayStation 3, you can't go wrong with this. Because the first Ratchet & Clank title I played was the 2016 remake, that had a lot more polish in every category, so I expected the original to be, dare I say it, a little bit worse. But that's like saying The Last of Us on the PS4 is better than the PS3 version. It's still a masterpiece. This is where it all began, and continued to make Insomniac games a household name in the industry. 
Ratchet and Clank, the 2002 one, gets an 8.5 out of 10. You're absolutely right. I am? Sure. An excellent 3D platformer that I recommend to anyone who has a PlayStation 2 or 3. It has an over-the-top story that doesn't take itself that seriously, colorful graphics, lots of weapons, personality, clever level designs, responsive controls, and it's perfect for all ages. I don't know what else you could ask for.